Let God arise. Not that he's sleeping. Not that he's taking a nap. Not that he's in hospital. On drip. Let God arise. Not that he's helpless. But let God arise in power. In majesty. In glory. In dominion. Let God arise over my situation. Let God arise over revival time tonight. Let God arise over my spirit and my anointing. Let God arise over your house. Over your business. Let my enemies. Let my enemies. Be scattered. Be scattered. Be scattered. Be scattered. Open up your mouth and decree. Enemy of my righteousness. Be scattered. Go ahead and declare it. Enemies of my worship. Be scattered. In the name of Jesus Christ. You finish? Scattered. Welcome to the revival time broadcast streaming your way. Coming your way by the voice of a sound. The voice of a sound. Giving the wind. Giving the wind. Giving the wind. Let the wind blow it. Let the thunder roll it. Let the lightning flash it. Giving the wind. Oh, Jesus. Oh, you're clapping like you're tired. You never had no supper. Giving the wind. A mighty voice. Welcome to the Revival Time broadcast. This is your man of God, Brother Gigi. Along with the Revival Time Sunday night crew. Bless my cameraman, my musician, my technical man. And bless my master. And angels that are assigned to take me into dark places. Dark prison cells and lonely prison cells. In hospital beds, the doctors do not know what to do. Nurses don't know what to prescribe next. I'm coming to you. Homes that are miserable. Homes that the devil has tore up. No peace, no joy, no victory, no deliverance. Husband and wife heading for the madhouse. One heading for the cemetery and one headed for prison. I come to you. I come to you, my daughters and my sons, my brothers and my sisters, my neighbors. I come to you with a message of hope today. A message of victory, salvation and deliverance. So wherever you are, this is our food. This is our breakfast. This is our night supper. But God has assigned us to share it with you. If you like our cooking. If you like our food. Call somebody. And assign them to God's Holy Ghost restaurant. Eat and live. Lift up your praise and give thanks. For the bread of life today. I don't hear you say nothing. These are dangerous times. These are evil times. These are times. This in the Esther's Mordecai said, Esther, do you know that you are come, you have come to the kingdom for such a time? Ask your neighbor, do you know that God has raised you up for such a time? As this such a time as this evil time time of wickedness time of evil time of chaos and so 
so many of my schoolmates have had to bury them and attend your funeral like some of you are tonight tell your neighbor i'm kept alive for reasons unknown to me And tell your neighbor, I am not going to sit idly by and watch my assignment reassigned to somebody else. Tell your neighbor, I've got a talent and I've got to work it. I've got to work it. I've got to work my talent. I've got to work my talent. I've got to work my talent. I've got to work. Tell your neighbor it's dangerous. Tell your neighbor you can hide your talent in the ground if you want to. But I have to release mine. Is there anybody flowing with me tonight? So my secretary. See with me. I'm going to hit the road. I'm going to press the metal to the, I want to press the pedal to the metal. Tell somebody I'm going to press the pedal to the metal. The word of the Lord. We celebrate mercy today. Come on, we celebrate mercy tonight. We celebrate grace tonight. We celebrate victory tonight. We celebrate healing tonight. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord comes to us tonight from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 reading verses 4 and verse 5. So that is 2 Corinthians chapter 10 reading verses 4 and verse 5. And it reads as follows. For the weapons for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds verse number five when will we conclude tonight it's deliverance night tonight casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the, obe to the obedience of Christ. The word of Almighty God. Listeners, viewers, and those present in the house right now. It is warfare deliverance night. It is warfare deliverance night. Tonight the general has a revelatory word that will change your lives forever. So soldiers, get ready for warfare. Warriors, get ready for battle. Put on the whole armor of God and prepare yourself physically, mentally, and spiritually. Get yourselves ready for warfare. The general is ready. The church is ready. I am ready. Are you ready tonight? I said, are you ready tonight? It's warfare deliverance night. So put your blessed hands together for our international presiding bishop, Bishop Dr. G. G. Cooper. Please receive him in the care of the blessed Holy Ghost. Remain standing. Stretch your hands and declare the weapons. Of my, of my warfare are not carnal, are not carnal but mighty but mighty, but mighty, but mighty 
but mighty but mighty until you say it well but mighty through God to the dismantling a stronghold you're going to make a declaration over yourself look where your strongest stronghold is with your right hand with the stroke of your right hand you declare stronghold stronghold operating over my destiny over my purpose over my si assignment be destroyed be destroyed by my weapon in Jesus name Jesus Christ name now believe it or doubt it your problem be seated believe it or doubt it your problem brothers and sisters ladies and gentlemen I need you to pray with me and for me tonight listen to me I come to you at a very disturbing time in history everything is under attack everything is under the knife everything is mobilized by and for and with warfare the presidency of the united states of america is under warfare the prime ministership of every prime minister around the world is under diabolical warfare every cabinet minister every senator every congressman is under warfare every evangelist every pastor every chairman every president every bishop every deacon every elder is under warfare You're not under warfare, that means you're on the devil sleeping in the same bed. If you're not under warfare, that means you're on the devil going in the same direction. If you're not under warfare, you're on the devil assigned a peace treaty. Somebody holler warfare. Somebody holler Holy Ghost warfare. Tonight, there are three warfares if we have time. conventional warfare look at your neighbor and said conventional warfare conventional warfare is a form of warfare conducted or conducted by using conventional military weapons and battlefield tactics between two or more states in open confrontation one more time conventional warfare is a form of warfare pray with me pray for me conventional military weapons and battlefield tactics between two or more states in open confrontation Tell the enemy the warfare is open confrontation. Tell them it's not a secret. It's not done in a back room. It's open confrontation. Secondly, in other words, conventional warfare is the use of traditional means to wage war. I'm speaking about conventional warfare in the physical order is normally fought using conventional weapons back to our text the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but you know i'm analyzing carnal confrontation carnal weapons such as bombs shells rockets missile cluster bombs firearms light weapons sea and landmines these are carnal weapons 
The general purpose of conventional warfare is to weaken or destroy your opposing military force. This kind of warfare is not for the weak and the anemic. It's for soldiers who are trained in tactical weaponary skill. It's not for cry cry baby and pretty moonshine darling. It's not for dead churches. Second warfare is unconditional, unconventional rather, unconventional warfare. So you got conventional warfare and unconventional warfare. Unconventional warfare, on the other hand, uses unconventional weapons. Touch your neighbor and say you got to know your weaponary system. You have to know what's in your armory. Where they keep weapons, it's called armory. Armory. Some of you don't even have you checked your armory lately? Have you sharpened your weapon? I told you years ago your hands, your feet, your praise, your worship, a guided missile against the enemy. Some of you have forgotten. Unconventional warfare, on the other hand, uses unconventional weapons. Targets. This targets civilians, population, as well as armed forces. Different. It specializes in unconventional tactics. In the United States, they fight both conventional an unconventional warfare in the American force, in the American armed forces there is a specific group called the naval, Navy SEAL ask your neighbor, are you a Navy SEAL? but ask them first, are you in God's Navy? are you in the army of God? Are you a SEAL? Navy SEALs, they fight unconventional warfare. They fight it in sea, in sea, air, and land. The sea, air, and land troops, they're called the Navy SEALs. They go through incredible intensive training program and there's a week in their training program that they call hell's week only the best not only the best only the excellent survive it is so intense and devastating on your mental and physical ability that many pass out Many faint and never recover. Only those who are built stand. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm built to stand. Good God, high five three, four people around you and said, I'm built to stand. <laughs> naval seals, pray with me. Navis, naval, na naval steels. Naval seals specialize in guerrilla warfare including infiltration enemies camp they infiltrate enemies camp destroy enemy supply and create diversions it's a different warfare from bombs and guns and missile they want to take out jamaica when you are a naval sea, navy seal you are not told where you're going you are not told when you will leave or how you will leave when the time arrives you just push 
right into warfare. They will come into Jamaica without our military detecting them, without our coast guard detecting them. Just like you have spies, CIA, DGIs, KGBs. They will come into the service as a worshiper. Hope your worker will come in the service as a worshiper. Devils and demons and witch and warlock and infiltrators will come in your church, brother preacher, as a worshiper. They'll dress as a worshiper, act as a worshiper, move as a worshiper, but they're diabolically a shine. That's why you need, you need, you need, you need, you need the eyes of faith, discerning of spirits, discerning of spirits. For the devil comes sometime in lamb coats, looking like lambs and sheep, but they are dangerous wolves. And they come in wool clothing. I've been preaching and telling this nation and this government and the other government for years. You turn a blind eyes and a deaf ear. Now you're waking up and analyzing and understanding that this warfare is not a political warfare. Let me hurry up here. So the Navy, the Navy seal. What is it, what is it, or what it is, what it is to be a Navy, a Navy seal? Hold your praise sister and listen because you need this. I know you're training shouting, but you need this. Before you even enter into the Navy SEAL program, you have to be good enough and in good shape to swim, first of all, 500 yards. 500 yards, 457.2 meters in 12 minutes. That is not that is not white bread to break. Swimming 500 yards in less than 12.5 minutes. You have to take a 10 minutes break and do 42 push-ups. And in, in less than two minutes, how many? Come on, bend on down 42 push-ups in less than two minutes for me. Come on, try. Oh, Jesus, have mercy on him. Go on, do what you have to do. Take a break then. Take a rest of two minutes and do 50 sit-ups. Sit do 50 sit-ups in less than two minutes. You better sit down. Your back is out of place already. <laughs> Jesus, help us. Ask your neighbor, do you still want to be a Navy Steel? Take two minutes rest, do 50 sit-ups in less than two minutes. Rest for two minutes and do 60 push-ups. Then run for a mile and a half, 2.4 kilometers, kilometers in less than 11.5 minutes. You die before you finish. Aside from training in teamwork, Seals spend more than 30 months learning how to dive and drive. Engaging in combat swimming, training with explosives, parachuting and swimming with their hands. Your feet are tied together, your hands are bound behind you and you got to swim for your life. Are you ready to be a Navy SEAL? No, 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 no. You're fooling yourself. You don't know what I'm describing. 
I hardly would like my son to be a Navy officer. It's dangerous. And you have to do press up. You press on. You have to be courageous. Never held back by fear and defeat. And the battle must be won. Who took out the most dangerous man in the world? Bill Laden. Who took him out? The Navy SEAL. They prepared in America. Camped in another country. Spied where the enemy was. Spy out where the enemy was. Took out Bin Laden without the Pakistani army knew. Before the government of Pakistan knew and the army and the military knew. They were out of Pakistan. Before Bin Laden men could raise a shot, the fight was over. Navy SEALs are the most forceful and dangerous military section of the U.S. Armed Forces. You got to spend time. You got to strike. You got to be precise. You got to strike with surprise. You have to hit with precision. Dimension and surprise. Somebody said, Surprise the enemy. That's conventional and unconventional warfare. One you just fly over and bomb and blow up. This one you infiltrate, you surround, you defeat, you scatter. You divide through surprise tactics and warfare. Taking out buildings. Taking out other armies and other forces without they even realize. Now, for the kill. Who are you in God's army? Now I declare conventional and unconventional warfare. Now our warfare is neither conventional or unconventional. Our warfare is not with flesh and blood. Our warfare is not fought in the human realms. It fought. It is being fought in the realms of the spirit. For the weapons of our warfare as God's divine and chosen people are not carnal. Our warfare, we don't use bombs and guns and missiles and helicopters. For they're not carnal. Not with flesh and blood. Not with your mother-in-law or your father-in-law. Not with that girl that wants to steal your man or your woman. Or your mother or your husband's baby father. No. We're not fighting with them. Your problem is that you fight your weapon on Facebook. Your problem is that you fight your weapon in the media. Your problem is that you fight your enemy across the fence. Your problem is that you fight your enemy with text that carries no name. Your problem is that you fight your enemy verbally and not spiritually.
So many of us are engaged in carnal warfare. The enemy knows what you're thinking. The enemy knows where you live. The enemy knows how you operate. And there's not a surprise. Because they don't know you. Your fight is not with flesh and blood. But with principalities. And powers. And rulers. Of darkness. In high, high, high places. Look at your neighbor and say, don't pick a fight with me. I'm really not your enemy. Principalities. Powers. Rulers of darkness. Diabolical, demonic, satanic powers. That's who we're fighting with. But listen, Paul said, no need to be alarmed. The weapons we, we use, they pull down and cast down imaginations. Second Corinthians 10, 5. And every high thing that lifted up itself and exalted itself against the knowledge of God bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ our leaders our some of our preachers some of our society people don't realize that the forces that we're fighting with are not really gunmen and child molesters and hoodlums and rapists and thieves and baby killers. We're not fighting with them. There's a force. There's an energy. There's a power that is working in the children of disobedience called diabolical forces they're possessed they're controlled they're possessed controlled infiltrated by diabolical forces it puts them to bed. It wakes them up. It controls their mind, their spirit, their movement. It controls their thinking. Their ideology, their philosophy are motivated by demons and devils. So now, if we're going to fight, everything that we use must become weaponized. Not seen, but felt and manifested. Can I preach now? So some of you are running to kill your Goliath when you have not killed the bear and the lion. If you are going to fight in spiritual warfare, first of all, you must be trained in spiritual warfare. You must be trained in the word. You must be trained in worship. You must be trained in the anointing. You must be trained in praise. You must know how and when and where to attack dislodge confuse confound surprise the enemy somebody help me I'm going to preach here so David was a young shepherd boy but while he was in the field never yet been in the palace he was learning tactical warfare and he had control over his father's sheep and he had to protect 
his father's sheep. And so one day, while the sheep were grazing, a bear came along and lamb chops was on his mind. Blood and wool was mixed together. And David said, I might be a shepherd boy and I might carry a rod but I'm trained to kill. Good God, the church is sleeping now. I'm trained to kill. And when he looked and the bear sprang an attack, his hands became anointed. And that's why David wrote, he wrote, you anoint my hands to war. The church not coming, God, and my fingers to fight. I'm anointed to leap over walls and run through troops. So with his beer hands, the anointing of the anointer, the anointing of the crystal, the anointed Christ, that anointing came upon him. And David said, you think I'm going to sit back and allow you to eat my sheep with my bare hands I'll tear you too and show your carcass so that bees make honey out of your flesh number two the, the bear was finished with the lion king he's king of the beast he will not back down from human or any other animal but David said, I will anoint my head with all. Church sleeping God and my cup run it over. Come on, God, help me. And David cry unto the Lord. Send help from your sanctuary and deliver me out of Zion. Then he started to talk to himself. But yesterday, I kill a bear. Today, the lion gonna be mine. And with the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon his hands, caught the lion, rip him apart, throw his carcass down, and say, have manners. Have some respect for the man of God. Have some respect for my sheep. You ain't going to kill nobody around here. I'm anointed to kill. Somebody tell the enemy. I'm anointed to kill. I'm anointed to kill. Not with blood, not with powder. I'm anointed to kill, not with oil. I'm anointed to kill, not with magic. I'm anointed to kill, not with witchcraft, not with voodoo, or shudu, or vexes, or exes. I'm anointed to kill. My hands are anointed to kill bear and to kill lion. So brothers and sisters, as I hurry to finish, one day there was war in the camp of Israel and the champion of the Philistine, Lucifer incarnated, Jezebel incarnated, Ahab incarnated, I'd come down on the family. The enemy's up to your family. And you are the only one in church. The enemy's up to your family. And you're the only one in the family with a praise. You're the only one with a worship. You're the only one that knows tactical warfare. So you can sit down there. So you what you going? Where are you going to get money? 
to bury your loved ones one after the other you better get on your feet and learn to fight and so David left his sheep with a sheep keeper and he said I'm going down to battle to see what I can do first of all I have some experience in weaponary destruction my hands became a weapon my hands were weaponized by God himself so that I could kill the bear my hands was weaponized by God himself so I could kill the lion now I'm going down into a bigger warfare I'm going down into a strategic warfare I'm going down into my nation's warfare tell your friends tell your neighbor my country needs me Lord God Almighty God Almighty God Almighty my country needs me my church needs me the bishop wife needs me my bishop needs help Spanish don't need a breakthrough your hands must become so when David went down King Saul was a commander of the army of Israel but when David looked for him he was down in his underground bunker Goliath had chased him and he went to hide on the ground when he looked on the first battalion the second battalion the third battalion they were all trembling and David said what's going on here I'm come down to help and his brother Eliab said where are you going boy go back home and look after the sheep he said that's all right the sheep is with the sheep with, with the shepherd I've left the sheep with the shepherd and he walked down he said where is the commander of the nation and he found him down in the underground bunker and so Saul salute him because Saul knew David and David said I'm come down to lend a hand tell your neighbor I come on a Sunday night to lend a hand to my bishop to lend a hand to my brothers and sisters and no devil go stop me so the king said <laughs> and this little quack I know you young and jovial he said by the way David you're just a lad you don't know how to fight you just got baptized you don't know about warfare the David David said I beg to differ your royal highness touch your neighbor and said I beg to differ I'm a fighter from my womb I had to fight to live when I was coming out of my mama's womb the devil tried to kill me and I had to fight my way through the birth canal when I was a boy devil tried to kill me oh. tell your neighbor I got to testify he said your majesty I kill a lion with my beer hand and I kill a bear with my beer hand and that nine feet six giant is nothing but a dog if I kill a bear and kill a lion I can kill that big dog God Almighty I feel the Holy Ghost I can kill that big dog said so bring it on I'm ready Psalm 23 
Thou anointest my head with oil, and my hands is weaponized. My praise is weaponized. My victory is weaponized. My feet weaponized. My eyes weaponized. My ears weaponized. My shout weaponized. So David said, Saul said, son, you're a lad. Put on my armor. There's some folks who want you to try Hobia, want you to try witchcraft. But David said, wait a minute. I have not proven this. Tell somebody. I have not proven your method of winning warfare. I have not proven your method of taking out devils. And David said, take your oil back to the oil man. Take your powder back to the powder man. Take your vial back to the vial man. Take your shoe do and your hoodoo. Take your tape line. And take your rabbit's foot and your parchment tail. Take your lucky Kennedy silver dollar. Take your parchment tail and your rabbit's foot back to where you get it. He said, give me a minute. Tell your neighbor I'm coming up in a minute. Give me a minute, let me worship. Good God Almighty, give me a minute, let me praise. Give me a minute, let me con connect with the connector. I said, give me a minute, let me connect with the connector. Give me a minute, let me connect with my fire power. Give me a minute, let me connect with the crystal. The anointed one, the Christ, the Jesus of Nazareth. Do I hear anybody here? He said, do you have a brook around here? He said, yes, my Lord. There's a brook running right behind the camp of the enemy. David said, fetch me five stones. And you can call it J-E-S-U-S. That's good. But I'm going to go deeper. I said, deeper. In the camp of the Philistines, there were five regions. Goliath of God, Escalon, Gaza, Escalon, five regions. So David said, I'm going to take up five stones for the giants. Every region had a, had a giant. There's a giant in Portmore. There's a giant down in Harbor Street. There's a giant down in Hanover Street. There's a giant in Duke Street. In Matthews Lane. There's a giant in Irish Street. And you gotta kill it. Kill it. So David said, This giant is from Gough. Get me my slingshot. Get me my firepower. I know how to angle my slingshot. Take out one of them stone. Thou anointest my hands to war. And my hands are weaponized. My praise is weaponized. My miracle is in my mouth. So David was ready. And I don't plan to miss. Tell the enemy. 
I'm out to take you out and I don't plan to miss somebody bring up a praise in the house And David, first of all, when the giant saw him, he said, is that the best you can send from Temple of Praise? You send that little midget, that little dwarf boy to fight me? And he cursed David. Tell the enemy you curse it now. But in eight minutes, I'll take you out. Somebody lift up your praise. Good God Almighty, somebody lift up your worship. And when David wheel his sling, somebody holler precision, direction, target. Shout precision, position, precision, surprise, target. And when David waved his slingshot, it was weaponized by God himself. Tell you enemy, if you spread your bed in hell, my God is going to get you. Tell you enemy, I don't care how big you are. I don't care how many connections you got. I don't care how many contracts you got. I'm going to take you out in the next six minutes. Position yourself to spring an attack against your adversary. And when David released his slingshot, it find its precise, precise target right in the forehead of the enemy and the enemy fall back and david said i got i ain't got no sword give me the sword of my enemies psalm number 18 and verse 40 that was given me the neck of my enemy that i might destroy him Somebody bring up your warfare praise. And David took the enemy's sword, cut off his neck, and put it on his sword. You must bring back the neck of your enemy when you go into warfare you must come back with the neck of your enemy when you go into battle woman you must come back with the neck of your enemy somebody say lord give me the neck of my enemy stand everybody And Samson was fighting the Philistines. And he had no spear. And he had no sword. All he found was the ridiculous jawbone of a dead jackass. He picked up the bone, the jawbone of a jackass. Flung it one time. 1,000 Philistines lay dead. God weaponized the jawbone of the ass. And the enemy was dead. We're going up to Jericho. My praise is the only weapon. My shout is the only weapon I have. God said march around it once for six days. And on the seventh day, lift up a shout. Lift up a shout. Lift up a shout. 
and the walls came down King Jehoshaphat was fighting three nations he was outnumbered seven to one but God said lift up a praise where is my Sunday night worshiper you ain't got no devils to kill tonight you ain't got no Edomites no Jebusites and no Hivites he said lift up a praise lift up a praise against the Edomites the Amorites and the children of Mount Shia and when the church of the living God lift up a praise the musicians the saxophone and the tambourine and when the people clap their hands and said blessed be the Lord God forever and ever praise the Lord forever and ever for his mercies you finished kill your enemy did I stop did I stop you did I stop you did I stop you four days to gather the spoil the riches and the garment for God ambush them over the cliff of seas take your enemies now line up your praise right now line up your worship child of God line up your shout right now grab the jawbone of the harsh pull up your hands weaponize your feet weaponize your lips weaponize your mouth lift up our praise I'm out of time but not out of revelation I just start to preach a message I've not gone into other areas that I want to go into but I come to tell you tonight we're not fighting conventional or unconventional warfare we're fighting Holy Ghost warfare and everything I find is weaponized by the Holy Ghost my praise is weaponized my worship is weaponized my shout is weaponized my hands are weaponized lift up a praise until next week at the same time when I rejoin you for another telecast from Temple of Praise your man of God brother Gigi reminding you the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down a stronghold. Let me hear from you. Let me see you this Tuesday for another miracle deliverance, Holy Ghost, sin killing, hell destroying, devil destroying service. Be blessed. Be here.